what's up guys just wanted to share a little bit about the motor so it's a 22r um boosted right it's not a 22r e so it's not efi actually running a weber 3236 carburetor so you know just a little bit of a lot of bit of details right in regards to the motor so the motor uh fresh out of the machine shop uh it's been bored 40 over it's got a fresh crank balanced out uh it's got arp main studs it's got lce engineering uh connecting rods with uh nip and racing uh pistons right so the pistons are basically designed off of the factory 22r et right 22r turbo pistons but made with stronger material so uh do have i do have a lc engineering uh dual uh dual chain dual timing chain conversion kit on here uh the dual timing chains obviously helps with uh you know the strength of the motor it's not a single chain with uh plastic guides right so it's a lot more solid especially with the uh, you know running boost and stuff like that should last really really long <laughs> uh the head has actually been done up it's i didn't know so the head is actually a civic head uh, that, that i ended up pulling out of a junkyard i didn't know it was an aftermarket head until i brought it to the machine shop uh, i actually spent 10 hours uh porting and polishing uh the head the guy at the machine shop was actually surprised uh, how shiny i got it on the exhaust side obviously because you want it really smooth um gasket matched the intake side uh exhaust side um it's got titanium springs it's got titanium retainers uh the lce uh, pro turbo cam so it's designed to handle 10 plus psi uh of boost right 10 pounds over 10 pounds of boost and uh it's got stainless steel uh one millimeter oversized valves so i'm see a little bit a lot of bit more airflow with everything that's been done to it uh painted the golf co valve cover um arp head studs right, which are really really important i have a comedic uh head gasket mls get head gasket shout out to to josie right for that input <laughs> um it's got these cool little you know bolts that hold down the valve cover these are actually from 22 r performance uh the sticker is actually modified right it actually used to look like this but ended up just chopping it up and uh because i bought a sticker for it but it ended up being tiny so i was like this is stupid so i had an extra one of these so i ended up making my own uh just took some fittings and fittings made some catch cans uh lines for the catch cans so those look a little bit better um it's got what else in the head i think that's basically it uh so motors honestly naturally aspirated you know there's a lot of uh torque on the bottom end compression ratio still it's at nine five to one nine point five to one so still you know high compression ratio and uh with that compression ratio i'm say i went that high because i wanted to go uh and basically had to go with e85 because of the high compression ratio that's what i was trying to see so on the intake side of things right i have a lc or offenhauser right single plane intake manifold made for these trucks uh it's made by lc engineering the web the carburetor is a weber 3236 uh that's actually been boost reference the top of the carburetor where the choke usually goes has been chopped out so it can get more airflow right straight into the carburetor um i do have a, a one inch billet spacer that's made by lc engineering it's designed to help with the air fuel mixture obviously going into the intake manifold so it's a different setup right from you know a 22 re where you know you have the big intake manifold uh you got your fuel injector obviously right before the motor so um fuel actually gets sprayed right before the combustion chamber so in here right it's blowing in the air gets fed into the carb and it's mixing in the carburetor so everything in the in the intake manifold is mixed uh air right air and fuel so burns pretty good uh for fuel i do have a uh, 35 uh gph uh fuel pump right hooked up to this boost reference fuel pressure regulator this is from lc engineering i don't know what brand it is um but i forget the brand some weird name but works pretty good it's uh it's actually made to handle up to 60 psi of fuel pressure so I think my pump's pumping up 45 so and then obviously that's getting boost reference off of here this boost block which is tagged off of the carb hat uh carb hat got off of ebay 
it's uh, hundred bucks. This guy actually, you know, had, makes his own uh, casts and stuff like that. So I just ordered a set from him. Uh, the jets in the carburetor. I don't know if I said it, but uh, basically custom jets. Uh, drilled out to obviously have enough fuel to be fed with the boost. So um, I did have to take the carburetor off like 50 times until I got it done right. So it went from uh, barely moving out of my garage to running 22 pounds of boost, right? Feeding, being able to feed 22 pounds of boost and I do plan on going up higher. So um, intake manifold, uh, intake piping, from eBay, got the tail knockoff uh, blow off valve, which works pretty good. It's pretty loud, love it. Uh, the $100 eBay turbo, love it, works pretty good. Uh, it's got the, uh, I guess I'm downpiping, two and a half inch downpipe. Uh, the manifold itself is actually a eBay turbo manifold that was designed uh, for the stock location, but end up chopping the pipes off the flange side flipping the pipe so instead of the turbo right the factory location of these uh uh the turbo location for these factory is actually down low so i ended up flipping it so it's up high so i ended up looking a lot better i do have a uh two bar wastegate spring but max psi i'm getting out of it right now is about 22 pounds i do have a boost controller that i'm gonna hook up um try and get more boost um uh oil return and it's basically just drilled into the oil pan right, from the turbo oil feed running through there's a t off of the oil pressure sensor i don't even have an oil pressure sensor in here uh, that sensor right there is basically just used as a switch to run my fuel pump um as far as ignition i have a msd 6al2 programmable right that's money that's where you know, I'm actually able to, you know, run this. I do have a three bar map sensor that's hooked up to it. So this, this box, right, you can actually program, obviously through a laptop, which everybody does, right? But, you know, for a carburetor engine where I can't really, you know, do a lot of tuning, this basically allows me to control the timing, right? So how I control timing is actually by locking out the factory distributor, right? So this is my OEM distributor, and I just bought a new cap new rotor it's got the copper connector so works pretty good so i ended up taking the distributor apart uh dismantled it right took out the springs and the weights for the mechanical advance uh took out the uh vacuum advance the little uh thing that usually goes in here uh basically locked it out right so it's maxed out timing at 30 degrees right now um i put this spike on because i had one of those to spare but you know you know looking pretty cool so basically magnesium uh, timing is locked out here and on the on the distributor and then i can control retard timing off of the laptop using that the map sensor there is a boost retard timing map that you can adjust from you know obviously the box but right now i'm just have uh, i just have the, lo the timing locked at when boost comes in so I'm not gonna tell you how many degrees, but that's my secret. <laughs> MSD wires, MSD coil. Uh, right now, the distributor I'm just using is using as an ignition pickup uh, into the factory igniter, factory igniter into the MSD box, MSD box back to the coil, back into this. I'm not having any misfire. Everything working good. Um, it did take me a little bit to figure it out, so I tried to use the magnetic pickup straight from here into the box but it's just me i probably wired it wrong it wasn't working good until i figured out it this way and then this way works pretty good for me so i have a two-step uh there's three uh so there's two-step launch control burnout mode uh off of the box um got aluminum radiator aluminum reservoir ebay special right there uh red top catch cans right now i'm actually running on e85 uh, which is awesome uh smells so much better um but it allows me to obviously get into boost you know a lot more boost without you know detonation right so uh currently running at 22 psi i have dyno day scheduled uh which will be coming up pretty soon i'm actually really really excited about that i am gonna push this 
to like I don't know if I'm being stupid because I don't really know what I'm doing right so just so you know this is my first motor build <laughs> this is my first turbo setup uh, it's the first time I ever painted a car a truck or I painted things before but yeah so this is my first basically everything I've done a lot of research uh appreciate all the forums on Google all the YouTube videos basically anybody that has 22R turbo, 22R turbo, I've seen, right? I have, you know, pictures and stuff saved based off, of, you know, how I wanted to do my setup, right? So, um, painted engine bay, right? So, this truck is 1985 Toyota pickup. It's got a 90s uh, four-wheel drive front end. It's a grills from a 90s four-wheel drive pickup. The bumper is off of a 90s forerunner. Uh, the turn signal slash fog lights are actually a custom switchback. I made myself... Now, there's a there are flush mount LED switchbacks that actually made the brackets to match the um, factory tail light, factory turn signals. They cut the opening and then mounted it behind there. LEDs um, to fit the 1980s fender with the 1990s grill. Actually, modified this uh, corner lamp, both corner lamps, and stretched it right so the factory corner lamp stops right at this edge. But I ended up moving this forward, so I made this bigger to line up, so it sits a lot more flush with the grill. So, looks pretty good. I know most people are running, you know, chrome bumpers, chrome grills, but I just wanted to do something different. Uh, Nardo gray paint job. Got the four-wheel drive fenders on there. Got 18 by 10 and a half uh, ESR CS15s, front and rear. Running them squared, so... Another thing about this truck is when I got it, I ended up having a engine problem, which we didn't know what was going on. Uh, one of my buddies ended up getting to an accident with uh, his 93 Toyota pickup, so I ended up taking the motor out of that. I ended up actually taking the wiring harness also out of it and put it into this truck. Right, so the guts are basically off out of the 90s. The other reason why I changed it, because I love this body style square body style but i hated the dash so ended up putting the 90s dash in here i don't know if people notice it but it looks factory it looks good everything functions the fuse box switched out the lights in there got my tech got some gauge pods down there do have a pioneer 10 inch screen um also have custom door panels like she built myself got the tech in there with the Japanese sunset. Now this is my door handle. It's what you use to close the door. And you pull on this guy, eject those seat cuz to get out of the truck. So I converted it from uh, the rod to cable, cable, cable locks. And that's how I get out of my truck. Uh, it's got the energy steering wheel. I actually ended up taking a uh, factory center cap out of a 1970s Toyota pickup steering wheel ended up putting this inside. So, uh, and she got quick release. Got my shift knob. Oh, uh, as far as the, the motor, I do have a lightweight flywheel, 16 pound flywheel from LC and the Pro Turbo Cam. I do have two 10 inch TW1s in the back. My first love is car audio. So, gotta have some bump. I actually have a six and a half in my kick panel. I did build some custom tweeter pods for the pillars. So it looks factory. And then I rewrapped the seats, ordered the kit off of eBay, which they don't sell anymore. Um, got the vinyl, black vinyl roof. I uh, got the Forerunner mirror conversion. Uh, the roof I actually painted with uh, specific vinyl paint so you don't have to pull, uh, pull the headliner up to change it you just spray over it and it dyes the vinyls which ends up pretty good so custom tail light I did myself it's gonna have the toyota sticker i have two and a half inch pipes uh exhaust pipe all the way to the back with the flow master super 10 i did flush the gas cap ended up putting it in here and so that's where i put gas now <laughs> I didn't have to modify this. I just cut the hole, turn the turn the holes that was in there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I am running 85, so smells hella good. 
grab the stick here. Stint it 5% for all the way around. Got the 50% on the windshield. Help prevent against heat. And that's basically it, everybody. It's the rundown of my truck. Follow me on Kamikaze at, uh, on Instagram at Kamikaze underscore 670. Shout out to uh, my boys, um, Team Exotic Minis, Zero Limits, the OGs, right? all the OGs out there. Uh, shout out to 671 Illuminati, my brother Tom. Uh, me and Tom met two years ago. Ended up clicking, ended up meeting at a truck meet, ended up clicking and you know, basically just, you know, show up at the car meets out here in Portland. I am currently in Beaverton, Oregon. So uh, if you want to stop by and see the truck here in town, let me know. Uh, I haven't been driving it because I just had surgery on my heel. You see it's all cut up. I'm not supposed to be standing, but I'm just bored. So that's why I'm doing this video. This is my first video, probably be the last, but... Yeah, next thing I'm gonna do is paint that under the hood. Think about doing the sunrise under the hood instead of top of the hood instead of top of the hood. So that'll be fun. But yeah, half a day. Kamakazi, born and raised, seeing the mind. So if you have any questions, just hit it in the comments. Message me in the comments. Hit that like button. Uh, so you're probably gonna be the first and last video I'm ever gonna do. So uh, don't expect more. But if there is more probably because i wanted to do it so all right guys take care hope you enjoyed the video